In this video, we are going to cover handling data from our PHP form and storing it within our MySQL table in the Alrighty. database. Cool, cool, cool. So if you remember from the last lesson, we put together this HTML form. Mm -hmm. Now we need to take a look at setting up our admin news page so that it can handle this data and do something meaningful with it. I see what you're saying. So when we enter this in, it's automatically going to put it in a table? That's right. That's okay. what we want to have our script able to do. All right, cool. So how do we catch this information and do something with it? Well, let's jump over to source. Uh -huh. And we'll go to the very top of the script, the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Because of the way uh, certain things are going to work, we need to have a PHP tag at the very top of the document. Ah, I see. Okay. So we're going to open up this PHP tag, and let's make that a valid tag. That would always help. Yeah, that would work. <laughs> All right. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to be on the lookout for any data submitted via the post method. Okay. So we need to look for something within the post predefined array. So what we'll do is we'll say if is set. Mm-hmm dollar underscore post and the element we're looking for is the name of that button which was form sub so has the button been pressed and if so we'll begin executing some code otherwise completely ignore this mm -hmm. and we'll go on to just showing the page as normal if there was information let's start off with some simple debugging we'll get okay. to the database input in here in just a minute okay what we want to do is make sure we have all of our data collected and make sure that everything is ready for use. Okay. So I'll say echo, and we'll make this very explicit. We'll say, here is the data we have to work with. Okay. And then new line, and let's echo out some of the data we should be expecting. So what exactly are we looking for? Mm -hmm. Well, let's see what fields we have inside of our form. We have header, mm -hmm. headline, news, featured, act, and active. Right. Those, that's what we're looking for. So let's jump back up to the top, and we'll say echo dollar underscore post. Mm -hmm. The first one was header. So we'll pl put that into place. And I'll actually specify which we're working with here. So we'll say header and then we'll add a line break like such and just to make sure that everything is in order and there's no syntax errors I'm going to save it out right here and we'll go back to testing okay so here we are with our form right. so let's enter a header let's put the uh, word test okay submit and it looks like something isn't quite catching test submit and nothing happens right so let's take a look at what what is causing this so we're checking for forum sub. There's our problem. It was forum, forum sub. sub, not forum. <laughs> I got <gotcha. laughs> Yep. Even small errors can definitely throw you off. Yes. So watch so your typing. Test, submit. And? You can see it's up in the corner. I'm going to have the script exit out so it's not so off okay. by itself. Because, I mean, it, it is there. Here we have, here's the data to work with, header right. test. So it is working, but we're going to tell it for the time being to simply mm -hmm. exit. Go back, add a news item, test, submit. All and right, there we go. Here's the data we have to work with. The header is set to test. Mm -hmm. So we can get that information across. Now, let's put in the rest of the fields. So we'll need headline, news, active, and featured. Okay. Headline, news, active. And, wait, my bad, featured. Uh, I mean, I, it would work in either case, but right. I'm just being a little picky. Keep everything in order. Yeah. And finally, active. Oh, watch the features right there. It also says... Oh, features. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, let's see what this displays. So, I'll go back to admin news, mm -hmm. add an item... So test, right. say, line just something so we can see each field. Okay. News, click, featured, click. and active. And there you go. So everything seems to be in order. We have our header being sent across, the line we put in headline, news, featured, and active. Cool. And those are those values that we placed within those checkboxes. Oh, I see. Why okay. we put the number one, we're getting that data sent to us. Okay. Now, there's one thing we're going to have to work with. So far, it looks like, well, we're about ready to start storing all of these values. They right, look good. Right. 
what happens if we leave these checkboxes blank? Remember we were talking about if we leave these blank, they're simply going to be unset. Right. If we try this, this is actually oh, going to cause I problems see, yeah. with an undefined index. Like we said, they are simply not set. I got gotcha. you. We're going to have to have some special code that can handle this case, because oh, we exactly. obviously wouldn't want notices to be thrown every time a checkbox is left blank. Right, right. So let's take a look at that. This is going to get into the first part of the data processing for the section of the script. The idea here is to get out all the data ready, and then we'll um, output what we would be ready to put in the database. Mm -hmm. So let's create a dollar featured. Um, and we'll get to it in just a second. Hold that thought, and first we'll put together an if statement. Oh, okay. So we'll say if is set. And what are we looking for? Featured. So if featured is set, mm -hmm. then we'll say dollar featured is equal to whatever was in it. Is if it's set, then everything is good. We can take whatever was in it. Okay, cool. Otherwise, let me tab this back one. Otherwise, we're going to have to specify, or we want to specify some value. Mm -hmm. So we'll say that featured is equal to zero. So basically, if if this is true, that means the checkbox was checked. So go ahead and put that one value into featured. Otherwise, put a zero into featured. Mm, what see. this means is later, we can take dollar featured and replace that for dollar post mm -hmm. featured. And this will fix the problem with the, uh, the uh, notice of an undefined index. I see. So let's take this code and duplicate it over and do the same thing for active. So if it's set active, and make an active variable. I got gotcha. you. Okay. And then the same thing. Take this, replace over the post version, mm -hmm. like such, and let's see if this is a bit more friendly. So I'll go back. Nothing set. Submit. Wow, zero look at zero. That. There we go. We can check one of them, one and zero. We can check both of them, and both are set. Cool. So now we have assembled data which can be used. So. Let's take a look at putting together a query so that we can actually store this data. All right. So I'll jump back one, and then I'll jump back into Go Live. So here we have all of our data. Now let's assemble a query using this data. So we'll store this query in a variable. So let's say query is equal to, let's see, insert into news values. Actually, before I even get that far, Start with the open frame. In this case, I do want to specify which fields we are inserting into to okay. keep everything organized. And I'm going to split this query across multiple lines just to make it more readable. So with this opened up, we can see that we're still within the string because we haven't closed it yet. So what are we going to be adding data into? Well, for starters, the header. Basically, the only thing we're going to omit here is auto ID. Everything else we're going to specify. Okay. So we're going to say we want fields header, headline, and what else? News, featured, and active. So those are the fields we want. And what are we going to do with those? Well, we're going we're going to be putting data into or putting values. Excuse me. And the values are going to be these variables. Okay. So that means we're going to need to concatenate out of them. Another thing I'm going to do is make sure that in the query, the values are put within double quotes. We're using a single quote string here, so double quotes could easily be put within them. Um, and the reason I'm using the quotes is we're going to be inputting a lot of string data types, which have to be encapsulated in quotes for the query to work. Okay. And I'm actually going to block these in before I put the data in, just to make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. You can see we have one, two, three, four, and five fields. So first one, second, third, fourth, fifth. One thing to note is that even though these last two are going to be numbers, mm -hmm. it is perfectly uh, fine to use quotes around a number. Okay. That will work just fine within MySQL. So just to keep everything together, I'm going to actually put quotes around the number types, as that will cause no problem. Okay. And we need to kill off the last comma. And then we can end the parentheses, so matching this parentheses here. Mm -hmm. We can also end off the string at this point for the entire query and add a terminator. So yeah, quite a variable we're putting together here. Yeah. 
Now we need to add in these values. So I'll need to end the string, concatenate to a value, and then reopen the string. So first, the header. I'll grab this information for the header. Grab this information, actually, yeah, for headline. Then news itself. And our featured variable, which has been pre-processed to contain a 1 or a 0 mm -hmm. instead of a 1 or unset. Right. And finally, we have our active, active value. So here we have assembled our query. Mm -hmm. Now let's set up to run it. The, uh, the way I want to run this is to put the actual query itself within an if statement so we can tell whether or not it works. Okay. So we can say if not MySQL query, give it the dollar $query and dollar $db link. So if the query fails, then we'll do something. And what we'll do is we'll use the MySQL error to tell us what went wrong. Okay. So we will echo MySQL error, and we'll also exit. We want to make sure we don't um, continue on with anything else. Just die right at that point. Okay. So with that, that should run. I'll leave this exit in place. Right. Um, just for the time being. Okay. Now let's check it out and see where we're at. So we'll go back and let's try submitting our test information. Mm. Argument supply is not a valid MySQL resource. So let's take a look at this. We have we do have a warning thrown by MySQL query. Right. Let's see what's going on. Now we referred to the dollar DB link variable. Right. Have we specified that yet? What is this to the script? If we go to the very top, it's nothing. It hasn't. Oh, I see. And what we need to do is we need to include that database script. I the see, the okay. one that we had set up specifically for this purpose. Right. We need access we created, to the database. Yeah. So because of that script, um, this is as simple as saying include and then specifying includes forward slash db dot php. So let's try this again. And it gave us no error whatsoever. Uh -huh. I guess we should have had something on confirmation, but, well, now we need to take a look at that table, because right. if data was, in fact, put in it, we should have a record. Right. So I'm going to jump back into the MySQL monitor. Mm -hmm. You see, once again, we're sitting at the, uh, the MySQL monitor logged in as logging. So let's select star from news. Ooh, check it out. There's our data. So our data ah, has, in fact, cool. made it into the database. That's nice. So, so far, looking pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Now, there is an, another concern here. We have to be a little bit careful about quotes. It seems to work just fine, mm -hmm. but there is a way to break it. Um, if we were to specify a double quote, because here, here's the problem that we're going to run into. Okay. You can see inside of this query, we have used double quotes around strings. Right. What if a string was to actually contain a double quote? Oh, you're good into that saying, case yeah. where you end off your quote, and that messes up the query. Uh-huh. So let's see. How can we test this problem? We'll say test, and we'll put a double quote. Okay. And you see... You have an error, I'm going to ask you, blah, blah, blah. You knew, so there we go. Look at that. So we, we need some way of fixing this error. Uh-huh. Well, we have, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to escape that quote. Right. So... Because there are going to be times in your, you know, if you are making, for instance, a news... Uh, new string there, you're going to have, and she was quoted as saying, and you're going to want quotes around what she was actually exactly. saying. Exactly, so, so we can't have our script just breaking because of quotes. Yeah, because she said something wrong. <laughs> so here's what we'll do. Just like when we did a bit of pre-processing on the featured and active checkboxes, right. we'll do uh, something similar to our text fields. Though what we're going to need to do is replace a certain character. Mm -hmm. So here's how this is going to go. Let's make, just like we made a, a dollar featured and dollar active variable, yeah. let's now make a dollar header say a dollar header is equal to, now we need to replace something. This will introduce the str replace function within PHP. Mm -hmm. It is a string replace function that takes in a string to look for, a string to replace with, and what actual block of text you're working on. So here's how this works. str underscore replace, and we're going to take in, what are we looking for? A single quote. Mm -hmm. 
where we want to replace that with backslash. I mean, excuse me, double quote. So backslash double quote. Okay. So what this means is find any double quotes, mm -hmm. replace them with backslash double quotes. So we are, in, in, in effect, escaping that double quote. Right. And finally, what we're looking for is basically the block of data we're working with mm -hmm. is dollar post header. Okay. So take this piece of information, look for double quotes, replace them with backslash double quote. Right. And end that off. So we need to do the same thing for all the other values. So it's a good idea to test often so you don't get too far ahead of yourself and find some parser that exists all over the code. Because there's so nothing else, with, you know, I have learned from this, is never expect it to work right. <laughs> <laughs> it will always, something will always go wrong, and it, usually it's your fault. So <laughs> keep right, checking it. So here's what I'm going to do. Just yeah. We'll check the header by itself first before we do the headline in news. Right. So I want to exit off at this point so we don't mess with the database mm -hmm. while we're testing things. Now we have our dollar header set, so I'm going to replace this here. So we'll say what actually got put into header, mm -hmm. and then we'll just end off so we can check and see how things okay. are going. So we'll submit and check it out. So there's the raw data that's going to be put into the database. Okay, cool. So it is, in fact, working. All right, that's excellent. Now we just need to do this for headline and news. So we've got... Headline, news, news, and headline. Now we can take these variables, mm -hmm. replace them over these. This also means later in the query we'll need to make sure we replace these variables. Okay. Uh, once we get down here. And with that now, let's make sure that we do in fact have all of these working. So I'll go back and I'm going to add a quote to each of these just to make sure that all of them not only contain the correct data, but contain the escaped quote. All right, cool. And, and they do. Look at that. So we're about ready to start using this. We can take out our exit. Uh -huh. We verified that we're working with good information. Mm -hmm. So now we can reduce this to dollar header. I'm just going to erase the array part out of it. So dollar, well, I did some interesting things to the syntax highlighter. And then we need to grab headline, and finally, dollar news. So let's see what happens when we try to insert quotes into the database this time. So we'll take submit, and parser. All right, so apparently we didn't catch some quotes properly. Yeah, line 39. And check it out, line 39. Yep. We didn't, actually on line 38 is where we'd... Uh, first got that into the falls code. back to what you said earlier. Is you know that's in the general area. It's not the exact spot. All right. So once again, submit. And, and now go. let's look at the data. Select star from news and check and it out. Look, you got the quotes in there. Cool. And an interesting thing to point out though is before when we were looking at data, we had backslash quote, mm -hmm. which I guess some of you might have been worried for a minute, thinking, well, what if I want real quotes, not backslash quotes? Right. 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 What, since this is part of a MySQL query, mm -hmm. what this is saying is, inside the query itself, add a literal quote. Uh. So once it got done running that query, mm -hmm. this means that a quote is the actual data stored. I see. It was simply a method of having double quotes around our data in the query and telling it that we wanted a literal quote inside the data itself. I see. I and that see. is exactly what we've got. Okay, is cool. exactly what we originally typed. If we hit back, we can see this is what we typed, mm -hmm. and this is what we got. That's what you got. So now we're set up to handle pretty much anything that's typed in quotes will cool. no longer mess up the script. So now let's take a look at... Now we're getting pretty close to this being a uh, working entry page. Mm -hmm. So instead of dying after the end of it, let's right. simply remove that last exit. So we loop back around to the main part or the main page. Right. So in this case, we'll simply say submit, and, and then we're back here. I guess we need to take out all of our echo yeah. stuff as well. <laughs> Jump back over, and yeah, we're done with this. We know that all of this information is good. It's working correctly. So, now, um, a news item. let's do test two. Just verify once through that all this is working correctly. Right. So line two, news two. You can see I'm incredibly original with all of my Yeah, uh, <laughs> I like the news, types. news two, news channel two. So, that seems to work just fine. Cool. What data do we have? And look um, at that. Adding to it. Now, 
here's where we could possibly run into an interesting problem. We have just submitted information to this. What happens if we refresh the page? It's warning us that there's still post data. Here's the problem. Mm -hmm. is We're sitting at this page, and it, as far as the web browser is concerned, that this page requires this data to get a specific result. If we tell it OK, we have just re-input all the internal uh, data. Oh, so okay. let's take a look at that. What is that doing? It input it again. Ah, uh, I see. I see. If we refresh again, same problem. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that even if the end user was to refresh this page, mm -hmm. they, they don't get multiple records. Okay. Let's take a look at how we go about doing that. This will introduce the PHP header function. Mm -hmm. Inside of HTML or in server client communications, um, as part of the uh, HTTP protocol, a header is basically just some setting that gets sent before the page itself. Okay. One of the available headers is location, which in, in this way can be used as a redirect, mm -hmm. what we, which is very convenient to us because after we input all this data, it would be nice if we can re redirect to the version of the page that has no data in it. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you're free to refresh because you're not no longer submitting data. I see. So let's put this together. Let's say that we want to use the header function to add or modify a header. Right. And header takes in a simple string. The actual header itself is specified within the string. Mm -hmm. What we want to affect is the location header. And we want to say that location is where we're going to be rerouting to. And in this case, we can use the ever convenient PHP self. Mm -hmm. So we can say dollar server PHP self. Now, one other thing I want to do is to make sure that the script does, in fact, exit here, just to make sure that, because he header doesn't necessarily mean that the script will stop executing. Mm -hmm. It's just telling the browser to go somewhere. And any extra information could potentially cause problems. So we want to make sure that after all this is entered into the database, we tell the browser to go back to the original page, and then we stop the script executing. Say, that's it. Just tell the browser, that was the end. Now go back to this page. Okay, that's cool. So if we save this now, mm -hmm. let's see if it's working. So let's do line three, and I'll just put buffer characters in here. Yeah. Okay. So here goes line three. And we can show here, and line three has been added. Three. Now, if we refresh, so I'll hit F5, no, no uh, warning this time. Right. If we refresh several times and check the database, Nothing and is going to be submitted. Didn't add anything down. So that way we've gotten around the duplicate records problem. Okay, cool. And really, that is going to cover. That covers everything we need for this lesson. Okay. We simply took the HTML form uh -huh. that we created in the previous lesson, set up our PHP script such that it was looking for that information to be submitted. Mm -hmm. If it was, it then started processing some of the data that needed to be. Um, I guess you could say edited a little bit before it would properly fit into the database. Right. So we took a look at taking the checkbox values, ensuring that they were set to a 1 or a 0. Then we made sure that any double quotes were escaped mm -hmm. so that they wouldn't interfere with the query. Then we assembled a query and ran it. I see. After inputting the data into the database, we then told the script to turn around and go back to the main page right. to avoid duplicate records. Okay. And that ends off that part of the script. All right. So with that, that's going to wrap up this lesson. All right, cool.